Software and Security Engineering, Lecture 6, Segment 3. There have been many other examples of public sector IT programs that have gone pear-shaped. Um, I'm going to mention three more at this point. The first is the NHS National Programme for IT, um, which held the honour of being, up until um, the Boeing 737 MAX disaster, the most expensive ever um, software project failure um, um, on record. Like the London Ambulance Service, the NHS National Programme for IT, or NPFIT as it was called, was an attempt to centralise power and change working practices. There had been an earlier failed attempt in the 1990s um, under the John Major government where the Health Secretary Stephen Dorrell tried to centralise um, all medical records in the NHS and was seen off by the British Medical Association and others. After Tony Blair uh, took power in 1997, the climate changed because NHS funding was increased and the doctors were more um, amenable to ideas coming from Whitehall. And from 2002, um, the government took over responsibility um, for paying for the computers in your GP surgery and elsewhere. And um, the doctors perhaps foolishly agreed to this, uh, and they thereby lost control of their IT, which suddenly started being um, aimed at administrative um, goals rather than um, um, at optimizing um, the ease of uh, practicing medicine um, in a surgery. But the key event here was a meeting that was held in February 2002 in Downing Street where some ambitious uh, uh, medical administrators pitched the idea um, of replacing all the computer systems in the NHS with new systems that would be shiny and um, lovely and compatible with each other. Um, like many organizations, the NHS has got a, a deep legacy of technical debt, of systems going back years that don't work with, uh, with each other properly. And the idea was that if you just replace the lot, now in this new environment where the Treasury was uh, well-intentioned towards the NHS, we could do something um, really rather good. And their plan had been to fix this over a 10-year period, and according to reports, Tony Blair said, can you do this by 2005, which was the date of the next planned election. And um, the leading doctor in the room said he swallowed and said, yes. OK, said Blair, do it. And he got up off the sofa and walked out. So the NHS had, in effect, committed itself to doing a 10-year project in three years. And they scrambled to put together a specification. Within a few months, they put together something called an output-based specification, which described um, the um, things that the uh, new hospital and other systems should do, albeit in rather general terms, and these were then um, given out to contract. And the NHS for England and Wales ended up having five local service providers plus some national contracts um, for um, things like the communication spine, um, which came to a total of £12 billion. The various providers then cracked on with this, and of course 2005 came and went, and most of the systems were years late um, or didn't work. The local service providers rapidly found that they'd bitten off much more than they could chew, uh, and one of them, Accenture, had the sense to bail out and managed somehow to escape without paying huge penalty clauses. Um, others um, ended up locked in there, and it ended up costing them a lot of money. And uh, one of the larger contractors, CSC, set up a project to design a new hospital patient administration system, which they were having um, engineered by a subcontractor in uh, Bangalore in India. And they waited years and years and years for this to arrive. And eventually, when it did arrive, um, the hospital in which they tested it uh, in 2009 was reduced to a state of chaos. Uh, because everybody was having to pretend that this worked because the Prime Minister then, Gordon Brown, was very, very interested in progress and kept on phoning up and so everybody had to pretend that things were good when in fact they weren't. And eventually, in 2010, there was an election and Labour lost it and the coalition government came in and um, the, the um, NP Fit project was abolished uh, with um, a great ceremony. Um, only it wasn't because many hospitals were by then locked into contracts that had been arranged with or through the local service providers. And for several years afterwards, 
um, hospitals were busy undoing the damage that had been done by the NPFIT program. Um, uh, one example at our own hospital, Addenbrooke's, for example, was that when this project started in the early 2000s, Addenbrooke's was world leading in its use of medical imagery. Uh, but then one of the um, aspects of NPFIT was that all medical imagery had to be done with the same systems, and so standard systems had to be procured, and then the convoy can only go as uh, fast as its slowest ship, and so uh, things um, were kind of static for many, many years. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into this any further because it's beginning to become ancient history now, but there was an, uh, an interesting case history written by um, some of our students in our Masters of Public Policy course in 2014, which you can find linked from the um, course materials page. 